Thank you. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's go, Dr. Z. I, I gotta, um, huh? what can I say about this soldier, this king? When anyone mentions the word hip-hop, this hip-hop legend is stamped as one of the greatest of all time. He reflects hip-hop as a culture. His contribution to hip-hop as an MC is prophetic. And his vision as an artist activist is nothing short of revolutionary. KRS-One warned us about where we were headed in his contribution to self-destruction in days ahead. He predicted the current state of policing in his song, what is it? <laughs> and Sound of the Police. And he predicted the current state of rap music in his conscious rapper. And in 1989, when his artist activist space wasn't enough, he created a movement to address the violence in the African American community. He is a legend. He is a revolutionary with the prophetic vision. He is a comrade in this struggle for liberation and justice. And he is my friend. <laughs> Put your hands together for Get it up. knowledge rain. Let's go! Over. Uh, 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 uh. Yes! Let's get right to work. This is a wonderful, wonderful gathering. First of all, the poetry was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Those two. Yeah, yeah. Woo! That was hot. I'm going to get right into it um, because the discussion that I, I'd like to have with, with all of you here uh, is about an eight hour discussion. Uh, maybe a laugh. <laughs> We'll probably break it down to five. But we, we are talking today about black history and, and a fitting topic um, um, right on, on, on the day after um, Dr. King's celebration. Um, I, I, where do I start with this? Because my lectures are usually called controversial. I don't know what's controversial about them, just the truth. Everything that I speak about, of course, you can look it up. One of the great things about being at a university is that when you speak, people can look up what you say, find further information. You guys have a library here as well, use it. But some of what I'm going to say to you is not in the library, not on the internet. <laughs> it's real knowledge. What is real knowledge? Let's start here with black history. Knowledge is awareness. Knowledge is not books. Knowledge is not words. Knowledge is awareness. Awareness. Information and education is not awareness. Education is training. In fact, American education is all about training you for the job market. You're supposed to get a, you know, a great education so that you can go out and be a professional at some form of employment. That's not knowledge. Education is good. If, but you will never be rich with a job. Let me be clear with that at the top. You'll never be wealthy employed. Only the entrepreneur, the self-educated, self-employed, self-reliant, these are the people that move forward through all obstacles in life. So what is knowledge, awareness? What is education, training? What is information? Things you know. You know, uh, beef is on sale $2.99 over here at Food Line. That's information. 
You can buy a new car today, no money down. Just go over here to 655 DD Street and you can pick up the car for no money down. That's all information. Tonight's news, so-and-so is running for president. Information. None of this is knowledge. None of this is even education. Just stuff in your head that you now know. Most people rely on information than knowledge. Whatever they're told, they believe. The last thing they were told is where they're directing their entire life toward. Hear what I'm saying? I'm going to say that again. The last thing they were told is where they're directing their entire life to. So, if the last thing you was told was a record on the radio, you know, I'm standing on the block and I'm da 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 da. You direct your whole life toward that. This information, you direct your whole life, start thinking about, wow, can I be standing on the block too? Can I? What if I was in there? Yo, that chick, she looked hot in the video. What if I was? This is all your brain energy going to just the last thing you heard. Turn on CNN, somewhere, Fox News, BBC, whatever. The world is on fire. We're all going to die. You start going to the hardware store for duct tape, canned goods, because of the last thing you just heard. This is information. Information's moving societies. Moving. They yell this way, the society moves this way. They yell that way, the society moves that way. All information. No knowledge. Barely educated. Meaning, education is training, and the entire American population is out of work because they're untrained. What is education then? On top of information, education, and knowledge, there is intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to know. It is not knowing. It is the ability to know. Do you have the ability to know. This is what makes you knowledgeable. If you have the ability to know something, you can become aware. And once you become aware, you're free. Here's awareness. Here's knowledge. An electrician walks in the room. Electrician walks right in the room. Certified electrician. The electrician looks at the room and sees lights, amps, ohms, wires. The electrician looks at this very room and sees a completely different room. Why? Because the electrician has electronic knowledge. The brain cannot see without words. The brain kind of looks at things and notices them. But if it doesn't have a word for that thing, it doesn't see it. You walked in this room right now. You're not thinking about amps, ohms, voltage, how long these lights can stay on, what's the wattage in these bulbs, what kind of bulbs are there? None of this is crossing, it's just in the room. The reason this is, you see the light, you see it all around you. Or should I say, you notice the light all around, but you don't really see it. Only an electrician with electronic words is aware of an electronic room. So the electrician comes in and sits down. A plumber walks in right after. The plumber sees a completely different room. Why? Because the plumber has plumber knowledge, plumber words, a plumber life. Walks into the, oh, you know what, this, this, uh, those pipes right there, that's carrying hot water. That one there is carrying cold water. And I see how it's being brought. 
We walk into the room, don't even think about pipe. We're in the room. There's pipes in the room. There's water going all through this room right now. But because we don't have plumbing knowledge or plumbing words in our vocabulary, plumbing reality becomes invisible to us. You're in plumbing reality, but because certain elbow pipes and wrenches and this, the language of plumbing is not your language, you could be in an environment with pipes, with water, and not see it. So the electrician walks in, the plumber walks in, they sit next to each other. The electrician sees a completely different room. The plumber sees a completely different room. They're in the same room. Now they're sitting down. Two knowledges, two awarenesses are seeing their awareness in their environment because of their words, because of their vocabulary, because of their knowledge. No one is telling them what their environment is. Their knowledge is creating their environment through their perception. So the electrician sits down and the plumber sits down. Both seeing two different rooms. A painter walks in the room. Room changes a third time. The painter walks in. That's not just white paint. That's a certain Name to that paint. There's a number on that paint. There's a certain, that's not just white against beige. If that's even beige. The painter would say, no, that's off-white, eggshell white, a summer white. Oh, that's a, some kind of beige. No, that's yellow, that's mustard. The painter has all kinds of painting knowledge in his head, in her head. So when the painter walks in the room, even though the plumber sees the, the room like a plumber, the electrician sees the room like an electrician, the painter walks in and sees the same room like a painter. All of this is knowledge. All of this is awareness. What are you aware of? The things you are aware of really is determined by your level of vocabulary. The less words you know, the less you can see in your environment. Mm. The more words you know, the more you can see. Oh, I know that's a halogen light. Somebody next to you don't know the word halogen. They're not even going to look at the light. Hear what I'm saying. If you don't have the word, you're not even looking for these realities. So we say in the United States, man, you know, black people got it hard in the U.S. Black people should expand their vocabulary. Mm. The more words we know, the more things we can see we're not trapped by any government, we're trapped by our own ignorance. The minute we get past that, there is no other threat in this world. At least not for us. And I say that respectfully because there's other cultures that are really going through hell. African Americans sit at the top, the very top, of African existence in the world today. African Americans. But we don't think that. Why? Because we don't have words like Pan-Africanism in our vocabulary. We don't have words like neo-colonialism in our, in our imperialism in our slavery. You know, these have to be regular words in your vocabulary for you to say it. It's <laughs> word. For you to see your reality. They say in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And this is so real. 
Because human beings cannot see reality without words. So I start here with knowledge. Knowledge is about awareness. What do you know? What can you see? Once you are aware, which right now, you are aware of how you need to be aware, meaning you are aware that you need a broader vocabulary. You already have a broad vocabulary. In fact, they say men speak 5,000 words and women speak 7,000 words uh, uh, in, their, in an average conversation. Women use more words than men, which means women could probably see a little more than men. Something to think about. <laughs> However, let's just keep it moving. <laughs> However, I say this, I say this because without words, again, your reality is skewed. It's it's based on your vocabulary. Why do I start there? Because now we have this word called black history. Black is a word. History is a word. If black is not on your vocabulary every day, then you're not going to really see black struggle. You'll hear about it. You'll be angry when you hear about it. But you will always be objective to it. It's sort of like, and I know this is crazy, I'm going to say it anyway, but it's sort of like when we was watching 12 Years a Slave. And the movie got all kinds of awards. But in the movie, the, 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 the highest line, the, 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 part, the part that won the awards, the, 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 the biggest scene, the scene that broke America down, that scene was the black woman being whipped against a tree. This is the scene that they said, this is why they handed, uh, and the sister's name escapes me, the actress that played the role. They handed her the highest achievement in movie making because she acted the role so realistically. A black woman whipped against a tree. Now we black people watched it as entertainment. Okay, it's one thing for every other race and culture and ethnicity of people to go to the movie and feel bad. Oh, we feel bad for the black woman. But black people went to the theater. And because black and possibly woman is not in the regular vocabulary. You say a lot of words, but do you say black woman? We say a lot, but how often do you say Pan-Africanism? How often do you say even Africa in your words every day? No, we say America more every day than Africa. So how, we, how can we even see? The woman's whipped against a tree. We don't get angry with that. I had to leave the theater, to be honest with you. I, I, I was like, wow. This is American entertainment. The degradation and destruction of our people. This is American entertainment. Our mother on the tree getting whipped and winning awards for it. We clap right along. This is because we have been desensitized to our own self. To our own self, we're desensitized. Why? Because the education, meaning the training, not knowledge, but the training, is to approach reality objectively, not subjectively. Everything is objective. The objective approach is the favorable approach. It's supposed to be the, the least biased approach. It's supposed to be the pure uh, approach to events, reality, and people. To look at them objectively. 
to not be part of what you are looking at. That is a colonizer's approach to reality. That very concept of not being what you know is the is the is the absolute is the master plan of colonialism to remove you from you. And I hope I said that right. To remove you from you. You're no longer subjective to yourself. You don't feel yourself anymore. What you feel is your education. Here's an example. We call ourselves black people. We know what black means. We feel it. But from an educational point of view, no human being on the earth is black. Come on. Who is black? Uh, well, the speaker here. You know speakers? That speaker is black. He walk on over. This is black right here. When I put my hand up to this, it doesn't match. I consider myself a black man. When I look at black and look at me, it does not match. Now this is where you start to see subjective and objective knowledge. When I put my hand up here, it does not match. Okay, so why am I calling myself a black man when I'm actually brown? White people are, oh, thank you for that. I'm sorry, my, my, my wife just handed me this. Um, women speak 20,000 words. <laughs> speaking on average, and then men are 13,000 words. Men speak 13,000 words, women 20,000 words. Just a brief correction there. Um, the, the, you see black here, and you see that your skin color does not match that. Now, stop here for one minute and talk about the Amen. Stop here for one minute. The reason that I can put my hand up against this and it doesn't match is because of the rape of our parents. Okay, my skin is lighter shade because obviously there's some European in me somewhere. All light-skinned black people have some kind of European in them somewhere. Our ancestors were this color. Try to comprehend that. Our ancestors was this color right here. As a matter of fact, they were, they were actually indigo is the color. Which is where you really get the word Indian from. Indo, Indian, Indus. All of that comes from the word indigo. Even the word Indian comes from that word indigo. It's what we, our complexion was before invasion and colonialism. So, put a pause there for a minute. That's the reason that my skin is not as black as that. But that means that black people literally do not exist on the earth anymore, or, so, or that they do, but and they're very minimal, they're the, you know, no longer the majority of the human race. That black person is now the minority of the human race. You can see people this black, this dark, or should I say this black, um, in India. Uh, definitely Africa, and places like Asia, the, the Japanese had dark-skinned Asians that they, of course, tried to get rid of. Same thing with the Chinese. Remember, the Shang Dynasty, one of the first dynasties in China, was a black African dynasty that started China, or what they call Sina, C-I-N-A. The English spelling is China. The original was Sina. China is not Asian. China's African. China was started by Indians. You, the religion was Hinduism at the time, started by Indians. 
These are side notes. My point here is subjective, objective learning. Start here so that we can understand our history a little clearer. Our history is not objective. Our history is subjective. This piece of paper that I've got, um, look around see if you see something white. Yeah. Here is, yeah, here we go. This is the color white. This is a white piece of paper. This is the color white. If white people look like this, they'd be dead. No human being on earth can look like this. There are no white human beings on the earth. No. White people are beige. <laughs> what I'm giving you here is subjective learning. Don't just look with your education, which is training. Have the ability to know outside of your training. Now you're going to get knowledge. There are no white people. There are no black people. There are no red people, yellow people. There are no, these are, this is fictitious nonsense created by your education. There is a human existence on this earth and it begins with the darkest of, of complexion people. The darkest of people begin the human race. Black history is not the history of African Americans. Be clear with that. Black history does not begin here in Virginia. <laughs> 16, 19 over there in Jamestown. That's not black history. Now that could be called African American history. If African Americans agree that that is their history, then fine, that's an African American history. And many African American scholars have agreed that their history begins at Jamestown, or was it August 20th, 1619, Jamestown, Virginia, 20 Naggers, N-E-G-A-R-S, got off of a Dutch ship and was immediately sold into slavery. That's African American history. A hoax. A fraud. If I may be as polite enough to say a lie. Africans have been in the Americas since 50 to 60,000 years ago. Black people from Africa sailed and navigated the entire earth before white people existed. The gene for Europeans, white Europeans, who are really albinoid Africans, the gene for so-called white people begins 50,000 years ago. Genetic evidence for the first whites begins 50,000 years ago. Genetic evidence for the first self-aware human beings begins 150,000 years before that. 200,000 year old, years old, that's how old you are. You are 200,000 years old. Your white counterparts are 50,000 years old. Your Australian counterparts are 70,000 years old. Greece and Rome came 1,000 BC. 1,000 years before the Christian era. Greece pops up, who were really a bunch of Africans in, on the Cretan Islands training these lighter-skinned Africans that would become Greeks. Rome is created by dark-skinned Italians and the Yemenis, straight Africans, and the, uh, uh, um, I get their name mixed up, the Akushkins. I can never say their name right. The Krushkins. These are the three people that came together to form Rome. That's why we use the name tribe. Because tribe is a Latin word, tribus. Tribus. It means three. You're not even a tribe. They say African tribes. No, you're applying Roman thought to African culture. We were never tribes. We were civilizations, nations.
living side by side with one another in peace. We created the greatest civilizations on earth that did not have names like jail, prison. There were no words in our society for police. There was no words, imagine, there was no awareness of a prison. People did not think of crime. There was no word called crime. It was the natural inclination to cooperate with one another, not compete with one another. This was ancient civilization. The colonist comes in and takes our culture and flips it like this. And how can he take our culture and flip it like this? Because what the colonizer has done in all history is he first comes with technology. Brothers and sisters, hear the rest of this lecture right now. Technology. The original black civilizations going back, you can go back to the beginning of human awareness. You can go back one million years ago. The beginning of human civilization, people were naked, no clothes was worn. Today they look at us, look at hip hop, and they say, oh, the women dress so scantily. Dudes is walking around with their pants sagging. All they want to do is show their body. Well, that was the original civilization. Take your pick. Is it colonialism and you keep your clothes on? Or is it your ancestors and you take them clothes off? Which is it gonna be? This is, I'm giving you real knowledge here, awareness. Ain't none of us stripping down right now. But the whole point of us not wanting to take our clothes off and walk around naked and free is colonialism. Not the word, the act. We can fight all day against colonialism. If you ain't fighting naked, you're, you're really fighting with them. The idea is not to read about your ancestors, it's to become them. Once you become your ancestors, now the enemy has a problem. And what's the problem? They don't tell you about their defeats and their losses. They only tell you how they conquered and walked through. And this is what we took. So through education, we're trained to believe in the power of white supremacy. We're trained to think that, you know, if I threw a dart at that white Jesus, somehow I'm going to hell. Uh, yeah. we, we, yeah. we, we fight again. We say, yo, we want the truth. We want to see God, but we're willing to tolerate the white Jesus. Yes. Black people are willing to tolerate that. And I say tolerate, because all black scholars know who Jesus was. Even the dude in the church preaching know who Jesus was. Okay? But we still are comfortable with other people taking our culture and using it themselves. Yeshua? Yeshua was a black African. How can black Africans tolerate? That's the word, you know, tolerate. How can we tolerate that? Because we are objective to ourselves. Our education, dying grandmother made something for you and left it there hoping you would get her point of view. Don't read, or should I say this, don't rely on reading. We all read, no doubt. But all the books are written by colonists. Every single one. Our black scholars got to deal with this. Everything we know is from white people. Everything! There is nothing that we know that they didn't first.
verse right there and give to us. The whole reason we're interested in Egypt or Kevin. The whole reason one of us, there's two, one part of us, or should I say the majority of us, are only interested in Egypt because our white scholars are interested in Egypt. Mm -hmm. mm. We go right to Africa, we say we want to see the pyramids of Egypt. We don't want to see Zimbabwe, who has the oldest structures in Africa. The pyramids of Giza, by the way, are not the oldest structures. Neither is the step pyramid uh, from Imhotep. Those are not the oldest structures. The oldest buildings are in Zimbabwe. But because our white scholars don't want to look at Zimbabwe or give the Congo any credit because they rob in the Congo, because they call Ethiopians niggers, so they don't want to look at Ethiopia, they don't want to look at the Congo, they don't want to look at Zaire, they don't want to look at South Africa, they don't want to look at none of the places that they're robbing. What they make us look, look at is who other people are robbing. Like Egypt, robbed by the Arabs. Arabs are the first ones to come into Egypt and destroy the entire civilization. Persians, first ones. Hittites, first ones. These were not black people fighting black people. These were foreigners coming into the advanced Kushite civilization. And I say Kushite because there is no such thing as Egypt. Egypt is a Greek word. The word was Kemet, K-M-T, and we're not even sure about that either. Because our ancestors didn't write. Uh -oh. Everything with our ancestors was oral, oral tradition. This is what we had, oral tradition. And you know what's so real about the oral tradition? Was that you had to be a person of your word. Come on. Come on. You had to be. Imagine a civilization where every word out your mouth must be the truth. Or you fall in that society. You're not respected in that society if you're called a liar, a deceiver. You're exiled out the community. You're probably killed on the spot. Colonists come in with technology, flip the culture. Let me go back. How did they flip the culture? Black people sold us out. Wait. I don't have to dwell on that. Black people sold us out. No nation on earth can defeat us except us. No nation on earth has defeated us except us. Slavery never existed or is existing right now. We are our own worst enemy. We are our own best friend. But how many of us even think we black? This is what we got to think about because everybody claiming African American and black ain't that. So this is how we get tripped up every time. Nat Turner sold out by another black man. Mm. Malcolm X killed by another black man. Come on now. When Martin Luther King was going around yelling, I have a dream. Black folk was like, what are you talking about? Let me go and watch the stories. <laughs> no, that's what happened. That's civil rights. That's what it was about. The majority of black folk was just like the majority of black folk today. You have, you, you, you have people that are screaming for our freedom, fighting every day to change the situation, and then you have the strip club. Come on.
not every day even participate. <laughs> there's a guy, there's a rapper named Juvenile. And back in the day, Juvenile. He got a record out. He used to say, you a paper chaser. You got your block on lock, remain in the G. Uh, to the moment you expire, you know what it is. Ain't no crying. Ain't no fronting. You handle your biz. See, the code of the street was, we knew we bad. We know we're doing wrong. We know grandma don't approve of this. So when the white cop shoots us down in the street, there it is. Well, you don't think we had white cops shooting us down in the Bronx? Of course we did. Matter of fact, all through the I Have a Dream speech in 1963, Dr. King is talking about police brutality. Yeah, yeah. In 63! But still black folk live out Bob Marley's song. He says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Don't worry about atomic energy. Because none of them can stop the time. Bob was cold. He was talking quantum mechanics. He was saying, time is what is real. He's talking Einstein, theories of relativity. Time is what it will actually theory of existence. Time is not real. But Bob Marley is talking about their plans to blow up the world is not over the order of nature. So why are you afraid of what they're saying and not more afraid of not being in line with the universe? So the song goes on. The song goes on and it says, how long will they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? This is 1975 Bob wrote that's called Redemption Song. Okay, 75, he's telling people, how long y'all gonna look at our prophets getting shot down, killed, uh, uh, um, you know, unsupported, uh, blocked, uh, in, in prison? How long are we gonna see our prophets go down before we stand up and say something? This is 75. That's back in 63. Here we are, 2016, same thing. Come on. We should be ashamed of ourselves. We should never call the names of our ancestors in the condition of our community today. Uh. Every time we say Imhotep, we bring his name down to our ridiculous level. Ooh. You don't speak the name of your ancestors and not be them. So when you say Imhotep, that's not something to study objectively. Oh yes, that's Imhotep and there's me. Right, 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 right. No, everybody else has to study Imhotep like that. Because Imhotep is not their direct ascendant. You, black people, are not supposed to be studying objectively about yourself. You're supposed to be studying subjectively about yourself. Everything I study, I'm going to be coming. That has to do with me. When I read about Frederick Douglass, I'm going to take on his character. That's the whole point of reading it. What's the point of reading it? Not being him. Yeah, yeah. The next time I read Harriet Tubman, they called her Minty. Other knows her as Moses. She had all kind of names. Harriet Tubman, I'm going to be her. How do you be Harriet Tubman? Well, you get knowledge. You get a billion dollars. You go take your family somewhere out of the madness. And then you go back to the hood. Harry Tubman. I'll say it again. Okay, okay, okay. I'm getting my, my, my cut signs coming. Um, Harriet Tubman. How do you become Harriet Tubman? You win freedom for yourself first. You take your family and you put them on. You go back to the hood, <laughs> grab two, three more heads. You, you, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs>
Only a few of us are doing this. Hip hop is one of the only, only music, if you want to reduce it to a music genre. Hip hop is one of the only ones, and I say one of them because reggae does, a, does it a little bit as well. But it is in our culture that when you make it, you always bring your boys with you. You always bring your crew with you, your clique with you. Everything about us is always cliquish, crewish, team, nation, community. Even when we're at our worst, doing the dumbest things on TV and radio, saying craziness, none of that has defeated the soul of us, the soul of us. Our soul is not on MTV or BET or any mass media. It's not where our soul is. That's the commercialization of our soul. Come on. That's not our soul. Our soul is in this room right now. Yeah. Our soul cannot be written down. Our soul cannot be captured. We are our soul. We are the collective ancestry of our souls. Listen to what I said. We are the collective ancestry of our soul. We are what make up the soul. Our soul is hurting right now because our ancestors are not being on it. Come on. Grandma just died the other day. Granddad just went on the other day. Mom's not here. Now, Take, a, take their picture out and keep it on the wall. Keep it by your desk. Keep it by your bed. It means a lot to them on the other side. It may be a little weird for you guys, but I, you know, I practice mediumship. I talk to the dead all the time. Those that this word, get this word in your mind as well. Mediumship. Mediums. That's what they're called in English. But back in Africa, they were called kandakes. And they were black women that were, that were able to see the future and talk to the dead. In Greece, they were called augurs. And they trained young white Greek men to become augurs. Get this, I'm, I'm diverting, but I have to say this and substantiate this. Um, black, a, your ancestry, your, your black ancestry does not come from any people on the earth. All the people on the earth come from you. You come from natural forces. Try to understand. Africans are the first self-aware beings on the earth. Try to get this. This is... Try to feel this subjectively. When they talk about hominids, prehistoric humans, these are racist terms. At no time was you an ape or a monkey. At no time were you this. At no time. However, We are among the ape and chimpanzee family. A cat is not a cougar. A cougar is not a lion. A lion is not a tiger. They're all cats. We are not apes and monkeys, but we are from that family. And we became self-aware Imagine all the stages of humanity over millions of years evolving in Africa until finally a self-aware human being arrives on the planet. We are not just the first human beings. We're the last human being. So you got to hear me. Don't think just first. Yo, we the first. You are. But that first is not a real first. It's really a last. You are the end result of human perfection. Mm. Nothing else passed you in human history so far. 
Now the future can change. Another human intelligence can arise out of all of us and rise a new race of people. Rise that are clearly more intelligent. It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened in one million years. Hasn't happened in 250,000 years. Hasn't happened in 150,000 years. Hasn't happened in 50, 40, 30. Hasn't happened. Humanity has not progressed past you. Come on. The only way humanity is going to progress is when you. Come on, sir. When we, black people, the only, wait a minute, I'm not going to say only, everybody else, I'm not going to degrade anybody, and, and I'm saying that to say that I can. My respect for humanity refuses to degrade those who have come from humanity. However, I refuse to have my people degraded and given a history that we're, we're calling ourselves what people who came after us are calling themselves. Mm. We're taking our entire cue of history based on what those who came after us are taking as history. They look at their history objectively, so we do. i got to close, I know, and so let me bring it to this level. Let me talk two minutes on the soul. Because here's where our salvation really is. At the beginning of this talk, I talked about a plumber, electrician, and I think a painter. Looking at the room and looking at awareness. Let's add a fourth person to that room. A priest walks into the room. The electrician sees electronics, the plumber sees the plumbing, the painter sees the paint on the wall, the priest sees God. You see, how often do you say that word in your day? Think about how many times you say God. God don't belong to nobody but you. Africans created God. Do you hear me? Africans, God is an African concept. No religion originated in Europe. None. Therefore, no European has the right to tell black people, you can't have the Ten Commandments in public spaces. That's an African document, the Ten Commandments. White people are going to tell us we can't look at the Ten Commandments in public places that we pay taxes to, and we accept that. Mm. We let them take the Ten Commandments out of society, and that's our information. Moses, a black man, born in the city of oh, the record. There's a record called Why Is That? Go look it up. <laughs> Moses was a black man in Africa. The Ten Commandments are not to be looked at objectively. Come on. When you look at the Ten Commandments, you're looking at your ancestors' uh, strategy for civilization. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at the level of humanity that our ancestors rose to. Look at it. The Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not steal, kill, lie, be envious of other people. Why would you take that out of society? Come on, right. <laughs> Why would you take that out? And right after they took it out of society, mass shootings in schools, mass shootings in movie theaters, mass, you know, just, okay, nobody's connected, nothing. Huh. No, 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 it's connected. You take the law out of society. Yeah. And then you expect people to follow what? Right. Science? Right. 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 Science 
is nothing. I'm talking about the entire discipline of science is zero to the soul. Come on. Zero. I challenge any scientist. The whole idea of science is observation. Come on. Objective knowing. You're trying to know the universe from your limited understanding. You're going to invent a tool to look at this world. You don't even know what you're looking at. And why don't you know what you're looking at? Yet the Dogon people in Africa knew exactly what they were looking at. How, how is that possible? This is what we've got to ask ourselves. How is it possible that Newton and, and, and Copernicus and all these people can come up with these theories late? Late in human history. Late, late. And Africans 10,500 years ago, forget 10,000, I'm talking about the pyramids of Giza, forget that. 60,000 years ago, Naga civilization, they charted the Orion Belt right there. 60,000 years ago, and left it as evidence for all to see. Now, if this is what our ancestors was doing, don't read about it. Try to do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. How do you do it yourself? First, you become the Dogon. <laughs> you do whatever you do. You eat their food, you put on the clothes, you'd be surprised what you learn. It's called anthropology. When you become, you know, you, you join a culture, you become it. So that you can learn it. White people do it all the time. Why we ain't doing it? <laughs> Why we ain't doing it? Let's, let's do some cultural anthropology on Africans. On ancient Africans. Let's become these astronomers and these agriculturists and these scientists. Let's become them. Yeah. And when we become them, then we'll discover their secrets. They never wrote their secrets down. Do you realize that the crown, the Pharaoh's crown in Egypt was never found? They did all this robbing of Egypt. They never found the Pharaoh's crown. Thank you. They, 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 they never found the Pharaoh's crown. Never. Imagine, they never tell you that either. They'll never tell you also that when you go to Egypt to get into the pyramids, most tourists, all tourists, walk through a thief's entrance. The Arabs blew a hole in the side of the Pyramid of Giza trying to get in to steal its wealth. And that hole that they blew into the side of Giza is the hole today that people walk into the Pyramid of Giza, tourists walk in right now. They're walking into a thieves hole. They don't belong there. Never go to Egypt and walk into the pyramids, ever. The, the pharaohs did not want you to. That's why they, that's why they sealed it up. Don't break the law. This is how you arrive at their thinking. You got to know that the colonist is a criminal. And if you keep following colonial rule, you're making yourself criminal to your own ancestors. You don't need to go to Egypt. You are Egypt. You don't need to go nowhere but in yourself and pull out your ancient ancestry. Wow. When you become your ancient ancestry, the devil got a problem. Yeah. Got a problem. Last point, I know I said that already. I, I am trying to respect the time. Last point on soul, you get this point, become your ancestors. Here's the other piece, where is the soul? Your soul is with you now. I'm gonna give you an exercise and I'm gonna be out. Like I said, this is a longer conversation, so much more to talk about. Oh, you know what, in fact, I, I had, um, this is a prepared lecture, it's a prepared speech. It talks about uh, Virginia, um, 1619 Jamestown, Virginia, and I point out some interesting facts 
uh, starting with the idea that uh, slavery was not even legal in Virginia until uh, 1641. So the first Africans to get off the ship could not have been slaves in Virginia because there was no slavery in Virginia in uh, 1619. It was, uh, if there was any slavery, it was Spanish enslavement. The Spanish were already here in the 1500s. They had African slaves coming with them as well, but they also had African artists, African technicians, African warriors. They only want to tell you, oh, the slaves was there with them. No, the Spanish, just like Napoleon, when Napoleon went to Egypt, Napoleon didn't bring just soldiers. Napoleon brought architects, scientists, painters, all kinds of people went over. Same thing with the Spanish. Spanish came over in the 1500s. They start messing with South America and so on. And, and so anyway, I talk about all of that here. If you want a copy of it, um, Z, you're going to have this. Z already has it. So uh, just check with Z. She'll, she'll give you a copy of it. Um, you should know this. It's great knowledge. But I say that to say, now where's your soul? Here's the exercise. This is what they used to teach in the ancient mystery systems. I learned it from someone on the other side, actually. Um, here's the technique. First, um, let us, um, all right, take the word hip hop, for instance. Hip hop. Let's take the word hip hop for me. The word hip hop. At the count of three, let us say hip hop to ourselves. Don't say it out loud. Just at the count of three, we're all going to say hip hop to ourselves. One, two, three. Now, the ancient spiritual teacher would ask you after you did this what is it that just spoke? Huh. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> On the count of three, let us say hip-hop. Don't say it out loud. Just say it to yourself. One, two, three. What just spoke? This is where ancient comedic knowledge rested. The colonizer thought that thought was in the mind. Here, this is the reason we say that we think with our heads, that's a colonial idea. Ancient Africans said you think with your heart, mm -hmm. which is why your heart was weighed on that feather against the feather in, in comedic knowledge. To, on the judgment that your heart had to be lighter than a feather for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The ma'at, or the concept of ma'at. Justice, the balancing of the scale. Your heart had to balance a feather. Look how cruel the Egyptians were. You put a feather on this side and your heart on the other. And imagine the feather was supposed to go down and your heart up. You were supposed to have a light heart at death. Come on. No anger, no hate, no guilt, no fear, none of that light heart at death. So why did I say, say hip hop to yourself? Because the teacher would ask you, who spoke that? Who said that? How is it possible for you to speak without your mouth? You just spoke. You said, <laughs> And you did not move anything physical, mm. yet you spoke. Come on. Go further. The teacher will take you further and say, but you heard yourself speak. Yeah. What ear heard you speak? You did not speak jaw. You're not using your larynx to speak. So your ears can't pick it up. The ears work on vibrations. So how is it that you can say and hear it? Go further. The teacher would say, well, if you close your eyes, you can see this word, hip-hop. What sight is that? When you close 
close your eyes, you can even see the word hip hop better. What is the sight that sees your future? Or sees your past? When someone says, yo, last week we was at the club, and you could see it. You say, yo, next week, I'm going to go to college. You can see it. Your two eyes, these two eyes in your head, don't see your past or your future or your present. <laughs> Again, the two eyes in your head does, does not see the past or the future. What sight then? sees the past and the future. All of this is your soul. All of this is the first you. The flesh is a manifestation of your consciousness. This is only here. This is only here to prove your consciousness. Mm. <laughs> your consciousness wants evidence of itself. That's self-awareness. Your consciousness wants evidence of itself. So it creates this. This. But this is not you. Come on. You are the creator of this. You're not the body. You're the light within it. Yes. Yes. This light can see, hear, and speak without the body. Yes. You're already dead now. Mm. Because when the body drops off, look at this, with the body, you can speak, see, and hear without it. So imagine when the body drops off, you can still see, hear, and speak. Because you're doing it now! <laughs> the more you go within and speak with this voice, the voice that is within you is not the voice out here. The voice that's within you is also in an inner environment. That's called the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That inner voice is in a place. It's in a place. And the more you get with that voice, speak with that voice, give that voice the words you'd like to see in your reality. Mm -hmm. Give that inner voice the words for it to see what you want to be of yourself. This is the soul. When your body drops off, you can still speak, hear, and, and, and see. So try to close the eyes more and see without these eyes, like see your future. Try not to speak so much out in the open about what your plans are and what you want to do. Tell them to yourself. Finally, listen. Because once you in that space, no body, no physical, okay? You're talking without the body. You're hearing without the body. You're seeing without the body. So there is no death. Get rid of that concept now, especially while you're young. I got rid of it like 35 years ago. I was able to do some amazing things because I don't fear death. The fear of death is what holds us all back from success. And that's what the colonizer puts on us. Mm. I'll kill you. But once you realize that there is no death, and in fact, no lesser being can destroy a higher being. That's physics in nature. Anybody coming at you with hate, you see, they're already destroyed. What Martin Luther King said was, don't let them take your soul. Don't stoop to their level and allow your soul to be taken. Then you lost. Yeshua said, 
Don't be afraid of the guy that can kill the body. Be afraid of the one that can kill the soul. This is what you must hold on to, your soul. Black history is the recorded documentation of the immortality of the human soul. That's black history. Black history documents the indestructibility of the human soul. All through our history, what do you see? Resilience, strength, outsmarting these demons, getting over. How do you have an African-American president in a racist country? <laughs> We're some great people. No, think about this. Think about this, because this is soul. This is not, oh, he's there because we voted. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Think of your soul that is outside of all this material stuff. Start to read the language of soul. And you'll start to see there are no good and bad people. There are forces in the world that we are all attuned to. Some of us are attuned to the thief force. Some of us are attuned to the murderer, liar, deceiver force. Others of us are attuned to the love, mercy, knowledge force. Justice force. The worst thing in the world is for a real thief, a real thief, to try to correct himself. That's terrible. That's controversial, isn't it? A real murderer should be a murderer. God wants that. Can you live on this level? Can you live on such a level of acceptance where if someone even robs you, you say this is the will of God? Because nothing can stop me. Nothing. The only thing that can happen to me is what my inner voice wants to happen. And so this voice didn't want this. So obviously this is my good. This is my good. Be careful with these sciences. They are ancient. You have to be of the bloodline to even acknowledge this. There are people in this room, respect to everyone here, but only 10% of you are really going to rob. Let's keep it real before I run out of here. You got to ask yourself, am I that 10? That's what you got to ask as we leave this lecture right now and you become your ancestors and you reunite with your soul. You stand up and you say, am I that one? Am I that one? This is what you ask yourself tonight. There are people here right now in this room in a crossroads of their lives. You don't know whether you should stay in school, you might want to quit, times are hard, money is crunching you. Listen to what I'm saying to you right now. Don't chase money. The minute you chase money, it stops chasing you. Wow. One of the greatest avenues toward wealth is charity. Yes. Give of yourself yes. and people will eventually pay you. Thanks for listening to me. Y'all gotta get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for staying all the time. Sorry about that. No, no, no. Stay on stage. Thank you for staying over time. We just had church today. Before y'all leave, I know y'all thinking he's ready to leave, but he is taking questions. Um, so if there are any questions, um, please raise your hand. We'll, we'll actually, we'll give it five minutes and let those that want to leave can actually leave for a minute. Okay, if any... Let's give it two minutes. Two, two minutes. Yeah, two, two, two minutes, minutes if you want to leave. If yeah. you leave, you're cool, but I'm just saying. How you doing? Oh. I just want to say thank you, and uh, can I get a picture with you? <laughs> yes, yes, right after this, I'm going to jump down and take photos. Okay, cool. Thank you again for coming. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Wow. Um, I had a question. So, um, I'm sort of going on like a spiritual journey myself. Yes. So, um, so how familiar are you with like the Orishas and all that? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last one. The Orishas? Oh, yeah. Like, Oshun Shango, all them, like, are you really familiar with like, Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, do you have, like, like, do you know all that? 
Well, I, you know, when you're on a real spiritual path, you meet everybody uh, along along the way. And the Orishas, I mean, that's I mean, that's this ancient African knowledge right there. Was gonna yeah, say, yeah, like I recently, I traced my roots to the Yoruba, and I've always felt like I had a connection to that. So. Mm. And see, look at that. I always felt like that. That's that kind of to be able to trust that and go with that is the seat of real knowledge. Not necessarily reading, but what you just said. I felt like this, so you know, and that's knowledge. That that's it right there. I would say keep studying though, because and also when when, when you talk about uh, I mean your robot. I mean, that whole science, again, you're talking about life and death sciences. I mean, mediumship, again, talking, even spirit yeah. possession. Right. Um, uh, I mean, that, these things frighten our people. Uh, and so a lot of ancient knowledge is missing from our, our community because we see a person in convulsions, mm -hmm. spirit possessing, then stops like a woman, talks like a man. I am da ba ba. You be like, yo, this is crazy, and you running out the door. But what you're studying is the center of real awareness. Because once you realize that this life, like, is this life, and then there's another life, you live a totally different way than someone who's trapped only in life and just says, yo, if you take this from me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Nah, someone who says, I know I speak to my grandmother every day on the other side, she's chilling. She's telling me stuff that cannot be refuted. Like, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll just give you a prime example of that. You're going to meet psychics. There's real psychics, you know, real people that don't, real psychics know that they, they don't do it for money. You know, if you give them something, you give them something. But they, they can only take donations, real psychics. You know, they lose their ability if they're using it for money. And that's, they, they lower their vibration. So they keep our aim is, they'll tell you what's going to happen to you next week. They'll tell, and it happens. And that's where they gain their respect. Now imagine if this was the leadership of our community. Seers, mediums, astronomers, people who could chart the skies and say, this is what we should be doing right now. You know, that's the that's the path you're on and congratulations. Don't doubt. KRS, we have a question up top. Yes. Sorry. Uh, how you doing, Mr. KRS? Good, cool. you up top. What's going on? Uh, I appreciate you coming out tonight to our university and speaking the knowledge that you spoke upon. Uh, I'll try to phrase this as well as I can. I've had this debate with my brother. He worked on Wall Street, graduated from Morehouse University. And when he came back, he told me that the basic principles of Wall Street is there is no religion. It's you follow money. So listen to what you were saying about the soul. The biggest thing about religion is it holds you based on the soul. Pray on mind, body, and soul. Like you said, the biggest thing to get us is with the soul. Do you, do you feel as though the biggest enemy of the African Americans in general is religion? Oh, uh, no. Um, I, and I wanted the biggest one, one, one fact. Yeah, no, no, I totally get what you're saying. No, no. I, I think it's our salvation, to be honest with you. Um, we were never meant uh, to live our lives based on money. This is a foreign concept to our genetics. We're never going to succeed using money. The success for us comes with trade, not money. Once we start a trade route, because see also, when the Romans first started to um, bully Egypt and other Af Mediterranean coasts, Africa as well, what they were after was our trade routes. There was money, there was coins, shells, silver, money was being, but it was not the prevalent thing. It was only for travelers. People who had to go from one place to another and didn't want to run the risk of getting robbed on their voyages, they would deal with an early banking system that you would leave your money with one rich person who another rich person would back you up on this end. If you had a note from this one rich person to another rich person, that note became what we now call money. We never needed that. What we are is craftspeople. 
We are the beginning of human capital itself. You know that Wall Street was created by the slave trade, or it was created during the slave trade, that Africans were sold on Wall Street, that the name Wall Street was a war where they sold African men, women, and children. The stock market, the stocks were us. Same thing with insurance, exactly. And as a matter of fact, New York life wouldn't insure black people, but they would insure a race force. So the idea is that no, if we can move away from money, or here's a, here's a, here's a more challenging, okay, put this all aside, let's talk just Wall Street then. Let's just talk Wall Street. When we create our own currency, we're free. Wall Street is keeping us enslaved and imprisoned to their system. Black people are the economy of the United States. We always have been. We are the economy of the entire country, even though we're only 14% of the entire country. This little 14% finances everyone. Everyone. Look in our communities and see how many corporations are in our communities. Multi-billion dollar corporations are in our community. They tell us we're poor, but all our money is making them rich. How can a poor person make anybody else rich? How can an impoverished society make anybody rich? They're lying to us. We are the true rich people. They are the thieves. So they get rich by stealing what we got. Wall Street. We should create our own currency. James Brown in the 60s had something called greenbacks, where he was trying to trade in the community, saying we should open stores that only accept greenbacks. We should support an electrician, a house builder, maybe even a police force that is fed, clothed, and sheltered by the community. We all have assets, all of us. There's probably a billion dollars in this room right now, literally a billion in this room in assets right now. The problem is we don't trust one another. So without trust, we're lost. And trust only comes with culture and principles. If you can hold me to a set of principles, you can trust me. If I can hold you to a set of principles, I can trust you. The minute you step out of the principles, you know you're wrong. I got some, I can, you can correct yourself, or I can, we can argue this in court. But because we have no principles, we have no trust. We know the banking system is based on trust. There's no money backed up by gold anymore. That's finished. They are pressing a button and printing money. So it's trust. The minute black people create a black currency with Nat Turner on it, with Harriet Tubman on it, with Frederick Douglass on it, and we only acknowledge that currency, imagine if black people said, we're not using American currency anymore, we're only going to use our own currency amongst ourselves. And anybody not down with this is a sellout. Get out of our community. dramatic change. But these are future ideas and they're relevant for you guys because you're the future. You're the young scholar. You have a fresh brain, fresh mind right now. That's why these ideas are important. Some of you in here are economists or will become an economist going to banking. Think about an African American currency that can be traded on the global market. Anybody would take our currency. We're the human capital of the world. If we came up with an African American dollar, $10, 20, 50, and 100, and we said, look, our $100, we sell it for $20. Dudes be buying up our money right there, buying up our hundred dollars. We getting rich, they getting rich. Here's how it works. You just opened up a whole can of worms. Now. I'm gonna cut this off. Everybody should get every African American all 
of us, all 14% of us, should get $100,000 start at the start. And why that number 100,000? Because that's the exact number that it takes to start an economy. You need about 100,000 people with $100,000 each. And when they start trading that to each other, the rest of this world can go to hell. They, we have nothing to do with them. We are self-sufficient. We are on our own. If we have farmland, some of your parents have farmland, some of your parents own assets, you are heir to some of these assets. If you want to do something for the black community, start some farmland and feed your people. This is the feed your people. Because the minute we can feed our people, we cut the supermarket right off. That business is over. They will fall. Whites, Asians, Mexicans, Filipinos, they don't keep those businesses alive. Respect to them, they spend their money, no doubt. But it's African Americans that dictate what's cool, what should be bought, when we gonna buy it, how much of it we gonna buy. It's African Americans that dictate the economy. But because we don't trust one another, which is why religion is important. And I've got more to say, but you're, you're, you're making me call. Come on, more questions, please. I'm <laughs> off. Somebody help me here. I'm going too long. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. China is the biggest market for African-American art right now. Go to Berlin. They had a sale, I looked the other day, $269 on a flight round trip for Berlin. That's unheard of. $269 to go to Berlin. Change your life. Get on that flight. Go to Europe. Europeans love African everything. Art to everything. That's how you get your art out there. And I say go over to, to China, to um, uh, Europe, uh, even if you can make it down to like the South Pacific because Bali, Japan, Vietnam, Korea, all of that is open territory for you. You're exotic there. Uh, as an as a entrepreneur, you don't want to go with this mad competition and everybody there look like you, talk like you. There's no money there. We all get me. We, with this, the economy's low. Go where there's no black people at all. Go to where you are exotic, to where when you land, everybody wants to see what comes out your bag. That's how you get your money. Put the finish that. CJ, he also has something for you. Oh, bring it on. <laughs>
Yes. With things like thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not kill. Would yes. those be considered crimes? Uh, thou shalt not steal and kill? Yeah, etc. Yes. Yes. But it, then it's from a society where those concepts didn't exist, if I, unless I'm missing something. So You're missing a timeline. Okay. The people that I'm speaking about is pre-dynastic Egypt. Okay. This is before Egypt. When we get to a Western understanding of Africa, then we get to um, the Ten Commandments, which is really the 42 negative confessions, which is African. Egypt had crime. Kush had crime. Naga didn't have crime. The first civilizations that were naked people, which is my point that you got to remember, when you see naked people, you see a civilization with no crime, with no words for prison and none of that. Now, the Ten Commandments is about a hundred thousand years later. Got it. Next question, if I can. Next question, come on. Okay. The song, Oh Yeah. Uh, yeah, what you say? One of my favorite hip hop songs of all time. Yes. You sound a lot like a 5%. Mm. This lecture and a lot of your songs doesn't seem. It sounds like a contradiction. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> Question? I mean, why is that? Um, why is that? Why is that? Well, you know, the, the, the reason I'm laughing as well is because what the brother's bringing up is a long. Uh, standing, uh, well it's not a debate anymore, but back in the days, um, 91, 92, I was having an ongoing debate with the 5% nation, uh, the 5%ers. All my friends, the 5%ers, Justice, Rakim, King Asiatic, Nobody's Equal, King Sun, these are all the people I'm running with. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods, no doubt. And so, in, in, um, in these conversations, or when we say we're building, okay, the discussion gets heated. Yes, it does. Um, and many of our, my point of view at the time was how can the white man be the devil? How can any man be the actual devil? The devil's a force, consciousness, etc. That was my point of view in 1990. I wrote about it. X Clan came at me, called me all kinds There's of. There's no time to be hanging out with humans. Yeah, you already know. X Clan came with theirs, and the poor righteous teachers were also in debate with me as well. But I kind of urged the debate because of something I said in the Source magazine about them, and so they would, wanted to challenge me on that. So between all of these debates. I wrote a song called Build and Destroy, right. where I talk about, well, I explain my philosophy, basically, uh, in, in that sense. So for years after that, you know, maybe two or three years after that, there was this, kind, there was this idea that KRS is, is, is not with 5% knowledge or against the 5%. It's not true. In fact, my friend Wise Intelligent, who I had a big historical debate with at Ryder College where he was trying to convince me Chris the white man is the devil how can you not say this years later I'm not gonna say I agree <laughs> but in 1995 I began to see <laughs> What my brother Wise Intelligence was saying. And just for the deeper part of it all, we both meshed into each other because Wise Intelligent actually became a metaphysician. And I kind of leaned a little more toward the gods and earth. And the reason why was because the idea of a white devil, I did not agree, I still don't agree with that. But when I look at certain activities of white society, 
like, yo, everything y'all say is the devil seems to be everything you do it. Everything you say is the devil. The devil's against God. So are you. The devil's trying to lock people up for no reason, killing and locking up innocent people. In the Bible it says the devil walks around like a raging beast, looking for anybody to devour. That's the police. So I started to see, and I said, well, I, I love humanity, and, and that's, I'm stuck there with that. I love people. So I can never see a white person as a, a demon. Ignorant? Okay. Brought up kind of stupid? Okay. Your father was a Klansman? Okay. But you, the devil, the actual personification of evil in the world? I don't think any human being is that. The black man being God. I don't see these black people. I'm looking around here. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so, again, I'm starting to look at his philosophy. So the record should mention it. Oh, yeah, what you said. When you see the devil, that, that was sort of like my coming around to what wise intelligent uh, tell, well, really what the 5% percenters was saying all along. I kind of came around to it and wrote that up right there for them and for my crew like that too. It's almost like, all right, it was, it's, it's like a growing up, like a development in, in thought. Because again, like I said, I don't really agree with the white man being the devil and the black man being God or the black woman being the earth. I believe the black woman is God, the black man is earth, and white people are ignorant. Thanks for the question. It goes deep. Let's do the homework. Look it up online. Figure it out. Okay, y'all guys, one, hold on one second. Um, I've been given the signal by Simone. You have one more question, and uh, the question is up top. The ball springs. Okay, I got looking for you, right? <laughs> right, right. So something you said really stuck with me. You said that um, our history was stolen. So I guess I want to use the word tainted is what we're reading now. So how would you, you know, uh, a college student who wants to be aware, how would you advise us to go about searching our, our real history? How do we find it since what they have for us is already tainted? So how do we get to be the king and queens that we should be? Well, first of all, if you ask that question, you're already your answer. So you are already the, the queen that I'm looking at. I can't see you. <laughs> I'll come down for you. No doubt. You're already, by your voice, you're a woman, yes? Correct. <laughs> you're a queen now. Right now. There's nothing to go search, there's nothing. Start building your community now. The more you build your community, the more knowledge you will get about your community. None of the books written, all the books, I like what you said about tainted. You're right, it's not stolen, because our culture's all around us. You know, it's not stolen. Let me correct myself on that. You, what you said is more, more accurate. It's tainted. Um, we have all, too much other stuff in our culture. We need to clear some stuff away. When I was talking about the soul, you have to feel like royalty. You can't read about royalty. You have to feel royal. When you feel royal, now, okay, say, how do you feel royal? Here's a couple of techniques. One, pick an ancestor. Pick any ancestor. Get a picture of him, put it up on your wall, and say, I am going to serve you. This is the hard part right here. This is the piece. And I'm, I'm speaking to you, but I'm speaking to everyone as well. Who are you going to serve? is the question you should ask, because the one you serve is the one that's going to teach you. We Africans have a, a system of apprenticeship knowledge. We don't sit in classrooms and be told what, what we should be thinking. We find our purpose, what we like to do in life, and we put ourselves under a teacher that we can trust and respect. Unfortunately, there's not many teachers today that we can trust and respect. So I would step it up to the level of soul 
and say, you know, I was talking to the brother, um, uh, I was talking to a brother in the back, the, 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 the first poet that came out. Um, and and I'll say again. Juan Duan. Juan Duan. Well, where is he? Did he, is he hiding somewhere? He's right here, so right. I was, so what we was talking about, my man, we was talking about um, um, the, the idea of having, a, being able to be at the right place at the right time. This is another knowledge, another awareness. It's not book reading. Yes, you should read. Yes, you should find as much information as you can in written books. There are some good knowledge, there is some good knowledge out there written, it is. But your question to really be answered, it has nothing to do with written knowledge. It has nothing to do, it has to do with a life experience. It has to do with being. And so, your being has to attract to it the knowledge that it seeks. Which means you have to give yourself a purpose. Give yourself a path. Say, I am going to paint a picture. So to paint the picture, you've got to go down to Michael's, you got to get some paint, you got to um, get a canvas, you got to go there. So maybe you take the bus, you may take the train, you may take all of this, you say, I'm going to paint a picture. So here's the knowledge. So now I 